Fans of Final Fantasy 16 have been clamoring for more of the game, and they won't have to wait much longer. At PAX East, we got a full unveiling of the new DLC, Final Fantasy 16: The Rising Tide. This brand new expansion is said to add 10 hours of gameplay to the base game, as well as a brand new icon fight with Leviathan the Lost. This new DLC and a brand new wave of patches is adding even more than just that. So if you love Final Fantasy 16, go ahead and hit that subscribe button button, because there is a massive amount of new content that's coming to the game. Starting off, we got a brand new trailer for the DLC, with this brand new location taking place in Mysidia. For those who have brushed up on their Final Fantasy lore, Mysidia is a location that first appears in Final Fantasy 2. It appears again in Final Fantasy 4, and for anyone familiar with CPU 3s work, this type of reference is incredibly common for them. One thing that you will note is that the sky here is blue instead of the purple sky that happens at the end of the game. This is because the development team got tired of looking at the purple sky doing in-game content. That is, at least according to Yoshi P during the panel. I could not agree more that purple sky was nice, but holy crap did it overstay its welcome. There's also heavy mention of Shiva in this trailer, which makes me hope we'll be getting more about Jill, as she was one of the characters that I think deserved a lot more from the base game, and I'm hoping this DLC will finally take the time to deliver what I think this character deserved. In terms of combat features that are being added, we have the brand new icon Leviathan, who essentially works like a gun, literally. He attaches to Clive's arm and shoots pressurized water. It's said that this will be effective for dealing with enemies such as Tomberry King. So if you've wanted an icon that is proficient with long-range attacks, as well as great crowd control, this looks to be the icon that you're looking for. As for the Leviathan fight itself, the developers say it'll be the most difficult icon fight in the entire game. Game. So they ask you to brush up on Ifrit's abilities and give it your all. And don't be discouraged if you lose a few times. It's very exciting to hear, especially for people who thought the game simply wasn't difficult enough. In this DLC, Clive will also be gaining a brand new party member, Shula. She's described to be an invaluable ally on Clive's journey to rescue Leviathan's dominant. This being a big point that they raised during the panel. We're on a mission to rescue Leviathan's dominant, yet at the same time we're shown fighting Leviathan. So how are we going to save Leviathan's Dominant by beating the crap out of Leviathan? That is a mystery the team says they're hoping you look forward to with the DLC. In addition, in story focused and action mode, the level cap is being raised from 50 to 60, and if you're playing Final Fantasy mode in New Game Plus, it's being raised to level 110. But the DLC is more than just more main story. It's also going to be adding brand new side quests. In these quests, you'll be learning more about the area in People of Visidia. There will also be a brand new stage called the Air of Hours, and eventually all this content culminating with the fight against Leviathan. However, it's not just the DLC that's getting an update. The base game is also receiving its 1.3 patch. It's going to add a ton of new quality of life features, the first among those being immediate return to the quest giver. So as soon as you complete a side quest, the game will give you an opportunity to teleport back to the quest giver. This will allow you to knock out side quests a lot faster. There's going to be brand new icons, that's with an I, for important character quests. This is good as it'll let you know which quests are most important to do. The game will also now feature icon loadouts, and will allow you to save up to five different loadouts. This is an awesome feature. For me personally, the two loadouts that I mostly need is a loadout specifically for trash mobs and another loadout that I would use specifically for bosses. This is tremendously appreciated. When Final Fantasy 16 launched, one of the criticisms was that you couldn't customize the button layout. This is finally coming to Final Fantasy 16. You will now be able to freely customize the control scheme however you want. They will also be adding more than 40 orchestration roles to the game, so anyone who's enjoyed collecting these and hearing the music, there is going to be a lot more that you can look forward to there. They're also going to be adding brand new end game content in the form of Kairos Gate. Kairos Gate has Clive fighting through 20 different stages, each one more difficult than the last. You'll be able to maximize battle performance to earn points, finding new materials and weapons to upgrade for Clive. This also features a brand new leaderboard, which allows players to try to be the number one in the world. It's also said that if you get the S rank on all the fights in Final Fantasy mode, then you'll unlock a special final boss. They did not detail who that boss is, and wanted it to be a surprise for the DLC. So for now, our imaginations can only run wild about who this could possibly 
possibly be. As you can see, Final Fantasy XVI's The Rising Tide is adding a ton of new content, but there has been a big question on if it is adding a brand new ending or not. Now previously, it was teased that if Clive gained access to all of the icons, that this might affect the final showdown with Ultima, as he would finally be a perfect vessel. This was later backtracked by Yoshi P, with him saying that there will not be a change to the ending of Final Fantasy XVI. And yet the last scene in this trailer is one that is incredibly interesting. It shows Clive in this ultimate form here, with multiple wings. Yoshi P was definitely shy to talk about this form and said that he could not say anything else about it whatsoever, as anything about it would be spoilers. That in itself is incredibly curious. Could this be a brand new ending for Final Fantasy 16 that we're looking at being teased here? Although they have said that there is no plan to change the ending, it's entirely possible that that was a misdirect. After all guys, the developers aren't just going to give away all of their secrets just because we asked. They have to be able to surprise us and sometimes surprising us means giving us the runaround. Of course, it's also possible too that it's entirely unrelated and will look back and think it has nothing to do with expanding on the ending of the base game. But that being said, Final Fantasy is absolutely no stranger to DLCs expanding on their ending. Final Fantasy 13 2 was the first one to do this with Requiem of the Goddess, giving Final Fantasy 13 2 its true ending. Final Fantasy 15 was supposed to have Dawn of the Future before it got cancelled, which was also going to give that game an alternate ending. So it has been done before with FF and I would not be surprised if this is yet another attempt at doing that. After all, many people are still curious about what happens to Clive at the end. Personally, I think it's a fine ending for this story, but I know many of you want to know more. And you'll be able to know more soon. The Rising Tide is going to be coming out on April 18th. The DLC will cost you 20 United States dollars. However, you can purchase the expansion pass and get the Omega DLC for $24.99. And of course, if you're going to spend the 20, you might as well spend the 24.99. See, this is how they always get you. Now, there's also some really big questions about these updates. One of the bigger questions being asked is, is the frame rate for performance mode being fixed? I'm sad to report that no, there is no update on the performance mode being fixed. Unfortunately, the performance mode will be remaining as it is on PS5. Will there be an even harder difficulty added to the game or something like Ultimania that can be played? Played from day one without having to complete the game twice in order to access. Unfortunately, no, that is not the case. So if you were looking forward to maybe them implementing a harder difficulty in response to fans saying that the game was too easy, that is not going to be the case. Then finally, there is the PC version of this game. If you were hoping that the PC version would get a release date at this PAX panel, unfortunately, that is not the case. However, they say that they will be updating us on the PC version soon. So if you're desire is to play this at 60 frames or more per second, you will definitely be able to do that, eventually. This all being said, I want to know if you are excited for Final Fantasy 16: The Rising Tide. Let me know in the comments below, and I want to know if you want to see even more Final Fantasy 16 after this DLC. As Yoshi P says, they're not completely closed off to the idea. And I will see you all in the next video.